Hello, beautiful people. I'm just going to vlog in my car and not feel self-conscious at all. So I'm in Toronto today because I am doing a job interview, so that was really exciting. And right beside the job interview was an indigo, so I'm going to go in there and read because this is the third day of, no, second day of the Questathon, which I'm hosting with Kenzie and Margaret. And one of the prompts is to read a full book outside of your house. I did bring both Little Dreamers and um, Black Dog, Black Knight in, or in course that I might want to read them, but I am totally going to steal a poetry book out of Indigo so that I can just read it because I've totally done that before because then I don't have to pay for it and I'm a terrible person. I shouldn't advertise that I do that, but broke person. So yes, so I'm going to go to Indigo. I might be able to um, vlog the book, but I'm probably not going to vlog myself because they sometimes get mad at you if you do that. But so far I finished V by Kim Fu and I finished Heartberries by Therese Marie Melhot. Both of them, they both read like memoirs. One was an experience about the Vietnam War and Vietnamese uh, immigration and refugees in Canada. I didn't like it very much. It was translated, so that might have been part of it, but it read very stilted and is as if she was telling you her story very much as a memoir, but it was labeled and said it was a work of fiction, which meant it just very confusing because it didn't have any narrativeness to it at all. Like more, most nonfiction has more narrativeness than this book did. And I say that I feel bad because it is a really important book and covers a lot of important things, but it didn't read well, which is just very hard. And Heartberries is a story about um, a woman who is also Canadian. I didn't realize she was Canadian when I picked it up, but she's Canadian native and her experiences of that and integrational trauma from residential schools, as well as identity, motherhood, um, eating disorder, suicide, uh, abuse, sexual abuse. It's a very, very heavy book. Again, um, I did not like the style as much because she didn't tell a very conclusive story. It was just like random bits, I guess. And I guess it was more like a look at life, but I never felt completely integrated because I never felt like I really understood everything she was talking about because she just kind of skipped around a lot and was like this and this and this. And she had a lot of you. So like it was told a lot in second person as if I think she was talking to her husband. I'm not sure who she was talking to, but it just was kind of confusing because it was as if it was like talking to the person, but of course I'm not the person, so I don't understand the situation. So maybe I'm just way terrible and I don't understand the, the greater meaning behind it. But again, I really enjoyed the content, but not so much the writing. Anyways, I am going to let you go. Oh, and I read a bunch of Son of Curly's last night too, and it was super, super good. Oh, her writing. But again, she can't deal with sexual violence and it makes me so frustrating. Like she needs to learn better how to talk about that. And it's a complicated thing. I've already written ideas for a video to go more into it. So I'll do that. Anyways. I don't know if you can hear it, but that's Hamilton playing in a store and I'm so excited. Hello, I am back home now. Oh, the cat is going to leave me. This is sad. <laughs> so I'm two hours into Blood of Olympus. And... Okay, now she's just standing there very proud on my lap. And I am really enjoying the fact that we get to see Reyna and Nico. They are two of my favorite characters, and I love that we get to see them more in this book. Um... There was talking about how, like, <laughs> just, like, fell through me. How, like, emotional and heavy Nico is. And I just, I literally started crying. It was just Reina talking about how she gave him some of her strength. And it resulted in her being more overcome than when she lended her strength to an entire army. And I was like, my boy, I love you. You're so strong and amazing. And I'm too emotionally attached to you. And I don't care. Oh my goodness, she's so Sorry, I just checked. Yeah, no, she's just looking at me real cute. Um, yeah, so that is my check-in in regards to Blood of Olympus. I am a real quest-thon person. I'm actually starting the group book. And I guess I've finished four books now. Or I finished three and I'm on my fourth. Look at me go. All in like 24 hours. So I will check up with you guys later. 
So I never talked about the book that I actually read in chapters, and I guess Indigo, I will still always call it chapters because I'm a rebel without a cause, and that is If They Come For You, and it was a lot about like South Asian identity and what it means to be Muslim and what it means to have all those different identities and have separation, especially between um, Pakistan and India and the stories around that. I didn't love all of her writing. Some of it was really just like hit you. And some of them were huge misses for me, which I find often with poetry. There's not only normally a whole lot of poetry that I find is like all hits, but I felt there was a lot of misses, especially as we went on. I do appreciate it. it was one of the first poetry fictions I've ever read that like fully called out Donald Trump. Like, man. Um, it's pretty much the same level as Eminem's, like, leg like home, so <laughs> it was, it was great. Um, it was strangely graphic, which I feel like is very common poems, and as someone who does not like to read sexually graphic things, sometimes I was just like, oh, she went there. I, no, I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> and that's just a me personal thing um yeah so it was hard I don't know how I'm gonna rate it it's probably gonna be a two star which I really hard because I know my rating system is quite different from most people's which like my two stars aren't bad they're like it could it's not quite up to perfection I guess and yeah that's probably going to be my rating for it because again for the third book this time it is a book that I really appreciate the content and the message, but I don't always love the way and execution of that. So I will talk to you guys later. So I feel like death warmed over. It's only 10 o'clock and I feel dead. I had two job interviews today. I applied for disability. I had company over. I had to go to another place because my house was being shown. And I'm finally just going to sit down and read more of The Son of Achilles. Oh, I also went to chapters and read an entire book. So I guess it's a successful day. Very exhausting day. I want to read a little bit. I have to be up early in the morning, but I want to read some Son of Achilles. because Hopefully it will be nice and peaceful and I will feel slightly better. Okay. This is my official petition to have Odysseus' name changed to Man of Sass because I adore him. He's a flanderer and a terrible person because he's like, I'm a faithful husband, and then sleeps with every single woman he ever meets <sighs> when his wife is faithful and stands around for 10 years. Anyways, he is my favorite because he's the smartest guy in the room, and if we're judging Greek heroes by their fertility, then every single person is an utter jerk, which is kind of the thing. None of them are, like, inherently good people, but... You can like people even when they're problematic, I guess. That's what I learned from Madeline Miller's books because they're all hecka problematic. Anyways, there's some very interesting scenes that I read tonight. I'm at 162, which is like, I think there's 100, 369 pages, so I am getting along fairly well. I'm really, really enjoying it. I need to go to bed because it's after midnight now, and I have to be up in just under six hours. <laughs> wise choices, wise choices. Anyways, it's super good. Greek mythology. I wish, like, I know how to say Greek mythology because I know Greek names in my head, but I can't actually say them out loud. I just, because I know them, I figure that I know how to say them. Anyways, good night for now. Also, a moment of silence because I know how happy it makes me when I get comments. I know how happy it makes me when people respond to my comments and, like, actually meaningfully instead of, like, thank you in a smiley face. But I'm, like, so tired. I like got a bunch of comments because I'm so happy so many comments came from my discussion about like how we prioritize and view booktubers and that was so amazing. Like I just really appreciated reading all of those comments and but I want to make those especially very thoughtful because especially a lot of smaller content creators commented on a lot of new people that I haven't so I wanted to make sure that like those comments are extra like well thought out and that I'm being meaningful in them. My brain is just not working. And then I had a new video today, and I'm just, like, looking at them, and I'm like, these aren't even that long, but I do answering them. I'm so overwhelming them. So thank you. I know that, like, responding the next day isn't that scandalous, but, like, I very much like to keep up and 
be consistent when I post videos. So, and if you haven't watched it yet, Anna Francesca has a video about invisible disabilities and the difference between that. I don't completely agree with her on the inherent difference between invisibility in disability or not, but I'm going to actually make a video about that, hoping. And I think that you should check it out because it's a really incredible one and it capitalizes a lot of my own experiences of what it feels like to have a disability in the community. So check that out. So I'm a real booktuber because I have sacrificed everything for this. So you're wondering why I seem really foggy in this. It's because, yeah, my phone broke. And of course, the main part of it that it got broken over is the part where the camera is. The rest of it is just kind of scaly and makes it look like an old cobwebby thing. I have never broke a phone before. I couldn't afford to get a warranty. It's only a month old. And I was literally filming and then I got a call and my phone started vibrating and it fell off its stand onto the floor and broke. And I'm so upset now and I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't have anything else to film with. Acevedo. Elizabeth Acevedo. I can say the freaking name. I like her work. I read her work. I'm reading more of her work. And I had to film a bunch of videos where I said her name and I couldn't say it. I tried. I tried so many times and I couldn't say Acevedo. My brain just did not click with that. And now, now that I filmed all those videos, I can say Acevedo. And I'm I think I'm not butchering it. It'd be really funny if I was actually butchering it still. Hello, so it is Sunday. I'm slightly sad because I'm all dressed up and I want to be able to film and yet my screen sucks now. So yay! I can probably suck it up and do videos like this, but after wanting to have quality camera for so long, it's just frustrating. Anyway, so I've finished eight and I'm going to finish my ninth soon. I have an hour and a half on left on the 1984 audiobook, which is yay. Um, and since I listened to it on three times, that's like just over 20 minutes. I'm really sad because I'm not enjoying it like I expected to enjoy it. Like, I just always assumed that I would really love 1984 and I didn't have to read it because I would just love it. And it's really mediocre. It's kind of like Fahrenheit. 451 as well as Brave New World, both of which I enjoyed enough, but they weren't books that like I loved. And maybe it's just because of the fact that I don't want to say that the things that it has, because th there are definitely relevant themes and I think it's important and depending on this I can somewhat make the screen quality a little bit better. Anyways, I finished eight books. I finished Blood of Olympus and really, really liked it. Nico and Reyna's parts are just so good and so many tears and I love I forgot how much I love Nico's art arc in here and I just love everything that Nico does but especially this I just I love him with my entire soul and then I also finished two unfortunate events series of unfortunate events books I read the reptile room and then the wide window back to back I enjoyed them again they're like they're okay. I really love the Slippery Slope book, but I feel like the thing is, um, Lemmy Snicket or Daniel Handler gets more, like, mature and stuff with his audience as he goes older. So I know the first few are a little bit more formulaic, so I am excited to get into the later books. And then I have The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which I also really liked. I kind of expected it to be a five star. It was a three star, so it was, like, a good, not absolutely perfect, but I really liked the world system. I really liked, I didn't realize it had a tiny dragon and a swamp monster and just the witch was so cute and wonderful and it had a lot of little scenes. I really like Kelly Barnhill's writing. She's very good at writing novels for children and yet making them accessible to all ages and very enjoyable for all ages. And I just really, really enjoyed the book overall. I gave it three stars as well. And that that is my quest-a-thon. I have a read-a-thon. I have a live show, which I need to figure out how to do live shows on these things again. And yeah, I will maybe finish filming things later on and it'll be adventure. So I'm officially like the worst host ever. Yep. I fell asleep on Percy Jackson's birthday and did not wake up for 10, 8, 
eight, nine hours. I was really tired because health issues suck and I was in a lot of pain and it was only like two o'clock and I was like, I don't have a live show until seven. I can sleep. I did sleep. And guess who did not wake up through all, all of her alarms. I was like, this is not possible. I did not turn off my lights when I slept. I did take out my contacts because they're itchy. But I was like, there's no way I'm going to sleep through these. I woke up in a panic, first apologized, and then was like, need to finish 1984 before the end. Because of the rain. I didn't realize it was raining, but I can hear it really, really loudly. So, my final thoughts on 1984 is that they're really good. I liked the ending better. I think it's going to be three star. Partly of that is because of literary merit. And I just really wish I enjoyed it more. I like the concept of it. But the actual overall story isn't one of my favorites, which is hard when I really literary things, especially since I just always assumed that I would absolutely love it. And that just wasn't the case. And yeah, I am feeling really energized. I also mean meant to finish Land of Achilles because, you know, Quest is on and also one, but I didn't do that. So now I am struck between starting new books and finishing that one. So... I'm probably going to read for a few hours and then try to go to bed again because, you know, I can sleep for long periods of time and health issues and try to be on a regular schedule. I can do life. Thank you so much for joining me on Questathon, and I hope that you enjoyed it if you participated and that you enjoyed this vlog. If you didn't, they're both ways. Uh, I'll have social media below. I am Kira the Scrivener, I believe, on everything, and happy reading and writing, and I will see you soon.